This conference will now be recorded. Great. All right. I will call to order this special meeting of the Town Council Subcommittee on Redistricting, Saturday, December 18th. It is now 11.26 with a 10-minute late start. We're going to have a moment of silence. And the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, we're going to start with the members of the subcommittee, which are uh, Councillor Fishbein and Councillor Zandri. And myself, um, I guess I will I will actually start with um, I talked to the registrars of voters um, mostly more yesterday, and then have a couple emails. Um, they said so. A lot of this came up because we felt we didn't have the full list, right? So they're saying that. The only list, those are the only streets we need to move at this time because the other ones, the over by the fourth district, there's the 85th that converts over to the 90th. They're saying that that is automatically moved. Um, and I don't, um, and that's just what they're telling me, what their word is. Um, I mean, at some point, I see that we're going to come up, we're going to workshop this thing out a little bit today, and then we can. Um, you know, set up a meeting with them this week to hopefully flush out the final things. Um, I don't know if Councillor Zandri and, and Fishbein, if you have time during the work day that we could Zoom that and um, hopefully get progress to either vote or at least get to the very next level. Um, so that goes. Did you did you want me to speak now? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah, so I I have I have vac I'm I'm off I'm on vacation so I mean if we if the registrars need help as long as we can whatever norm post it like we're supposed to so we don't run into any problems yeah you know with people because again if if as an example if two of us arrive to do the work simultaneously I think that's an effective quorum so we've got to kind of yeah, announce speaking. that publicly which is fine or 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 if we're gonna do work with the registrars to help them. We don't want to have a situation where we're not noticing properly or there's conflict. We could just schedule shifts. If Craig's available for a couple hours, he can do it. If I'm available a couple hours, I can do it. As long as the public is made aware, I, that's all my concern is on, on with that aspect that we're following the, the requirements. So, um, so Tom, or, yeah, go Tom, ahead. What, who rendered the legal opinion that the changes automatically happen with regard to certain districts because there is no statute to that effect and Janice does not agree. Yeah, I questioned it uh, and they, they were just like, no, that's 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 just the way it is. It's okay. Yeah. So um, this was all these are like emails from last night and calling and stuff and obviously they weren't able to make it. So this for everybody else that's listening, because this is a lot more people than we initially talked or planned, this meeting evolved over the desire for the three of us have a conversation uh, and avoid any problems over email. And we, um, and I realized, we realized um, yesterday morning that we can't just have a conversation without posting it. Um, it was just, um, it was in kind of an unintentional uh, oversight. So we posted it quickly um, so that we could have this, um, so that we can have the conversation that you are, you are witnessing now. Uh, so the register is um, not available for for this morning necessarily. Um, probably they'd, they'd be fine with next week. And let me pull up the email I have from Rob Avery. Um, yeah, because it, it's basically it's just what I said. It's just that the state said the 90th takes over the 86th. And the dividing line between the 90th and the 85th is 91, and that is cannot be changed. So he's saying that because that is part of the declaration, 
that there's nothing we can do about it. Everything over that side of the line is the 90th. Yeah, I concur there, but within that area, and I, I share with you guys the maps, yep. pre presently there are two local voting districts, the first and the ninth. The first is minuscule, the ninth is huge. Yep. So Mr. Avery's position with no legal basis is the huge district that we already have is going to get huger. No. So the changes that this is what um, what uh, Mr. Avery and Mr. Parisi have said that the, the changes that they submitted are the ones that are necessary to move them to the next stage and it locks in uh, the state level, the state's, you know, mandate down that these are the new districts. And that we, once we do that, they would have, they would feel they have the authority to proceed with any of the internal Wallingford changes. And that they do intend to do that, that that is just, has not been included in this initial proposal because they don't, they are waiting for the initial sign off that it's okay. He, uh, Rob Avery had said that he didn't feel they had the authority until we signed off on that or approved that vote to go ahead and do that. Now they have started driving around um, and look, trying to figure out cause some of the, the lines cut through streets, which I think you talked about over by Ashwood Village. Um, those kind of details would determine the internal districts, but this is to solidify the, the state districts. So um, the, prob the problem that we have is the internal districts have to be set in order for the DTC and the RTC to do their thing. So I think the most expedient thing, so I just want, you know, 9-169 says the registrars have nothing to do with the internal districts. It says the legislative body, which is us. Legislative body of any town consolidated district, yada, yada, may divide and from time to time redivide such municipality into voting districts. Doesn't yeah. say the registrars. So then the registrars of the voters determine where people vote within the district. And if they can't agree, then the legislative body makes that determination. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't, you don't, so you don't think, well, I mean, that's, that's the state saying that the legislative body is the one that's responsible, right? That, that, that we sign off and we approve. That doesn't necessarily mean that the nine of us sit down and draw the lines. It that, does. That's, that's, that's 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 what it does say. We we draw the internal lines. That is, the registrars have nothing. I mean, at Janice and I, I mean, says the legislative body creates the districts, may divide, and from time to time redivide such municipality into voting districts. Registrar of voters is not in that sentence at all. There is no statute that says that they create the lines. So. From my perspective, I think I think we take the existing districts, look at them in conjunction with the map that came down, try and um, keep those districts as much as possible uh, to try and not have tumult, um, but then give the map to the registrars and say, these are the lines, these are the districts, do what you got to do. And they're going to come back with us with, okay, this is how many Republicans in this district, how many Democrats, let the town committees know so that they can have seats on their various bodies. That's uh, from my perspective. And that's why I sent you the map with a proposal. And, and I am going to, because I did notice the difference between district two and district three. Um, there's one street that I didn't bring over, but. I think that's all we got to do here. And then if the registrars want assistance from us, we would not be assisting as counselors. We'd be assisting as volunteers to get stuff moved. All right, Jason, you were raising your hand. Yeah, no, I just, I just wanted to make a couple of quick points. You know, my, my, what I'm looking at here is, a smaller version of what Craig is talking about. And it, and what Craig is discussing has its own merit. 
because there there is a lot of imbalance out there. But as much as we might want to do all of it at once, which might make sense from a perspective of, well, if we're going to take it all apart and put it back together, wouldn't it be better to do it all at once? I think timing is is the initial factor right now. So let me use two examples. We, we we had the we had the election prior for our state representation and you know state senate seats. Now this comes down and it changes who represents who right now. But that's okay because everybody voted properly and they were redistricted later. They're still represented by somebody, although there are some changes. All of the voting was there was no there was no intentional fraud or any accidental fraud in any of that voting because it occurred before changes were made after redistricting occurs and some people are represented by someone differently this is an equal issue right now the rtc and the dtc have caucuses coming up which are elections if if these changes aren't settled now there there is the chance of accidental voting in the incorrect district which could invalidate people somebody's going to show up and vote for seven to 14 people in in the wrong district there's going to be winners chosen out of those buckets that won't be there later if we do these changes now with the current nine districts just moving them around so they match the 85th the 103rd and the 90th is outlined then valid votes occur People are seated on both committees, and then at some future point, there may be some shuffling around. So somebody that originally voted for people in the ninth, they might be represented by people in the eighth now, but that's okay. Their votes were valid when cast. Their representation started, as an example, in the ninth, and then moved when the redistricting occurred, and now they're represented by people in the eighth. Those committees represent a different set of 75 voters each. I, I think if we try to do all of it in the next week and a half, we're, we're opening a can of worms that we won't be able to get back together before the caucuses must occur. That's what I'm looking at. Because the last thing I want to see are two separate elections for caucuses and have somebody challenge them by saying, there were people voting in my district that didn't belong there. And that's really where the crux of this concern comes from me. I agree. I think we got to break two different things up. Not that they can't be done. The second one can't be done kind of quickly, but um, but what's the difference then between adjusting the internal districts a little bit later versus um, the situation where people are now going to be represented by somebody different? I mean, once the once the town committees are formed then that they are formed and they are members for, for the two years. Um, right, so, and, and that's that's my point. So right now, if I look at the map, I, I can see the map change, yeah. I, especially like, I'll just use Astral Village as an example. We know that's supposed to move. Yeah. If there was a special election tomorrow because somebody passed away, we would have to know where those lines are. Well, that's different, but that's a that's a governmental function. How would the parties affect that? I mean, they wouldn't need to. I mean, the the de the Democratic or Republican town committees don't have a legal. They, I mean, they have to post, um, you know, their caucuses and post their slates and things like that. But Special election for what? I I was trying to use an example. I don't want to confuse the discussion. My my point is, and I'm not a lawyer, all right, but I'm I'm just assuming as a lay person that if somebody wants to make an argument that hey, these, these districts were redrawn at the state level. Some, if you want to blame the legislative body, if it's on us, didn't do their job to redraw the lines. And the, and the lay person's going to argue, and who knows where the state's going to take it. There were people voting in District 8 that should have been moved to District 2, as an example. And as such, I'm going to argue that people in the Republican Town Committee didn't validate the right votes in the right districts so i'm going to charge that the information set to the state was incorrect invalid it should be invalidated and there's no committee someone could make that argument now if they but, win that argument but, there's no rtc but the town and the state would run an election fine based on 
the districts that the that the town will finish before any sort of election we're just we're we're trying to mix i'm trying to keep separate the electing government people versus the town committees but wait, town, but wait maybe town committees jason, are elections they're elections jason wait hold on I, maybe jason maybe you have a good idea here L let's just say that uh, a state representative passes away in March of this year, and there's going to be a special election. That special election will be based upon the districts as they presently exist, because this goes into place next year when the representatives get sworn in next January then they will be representing these particular areas. So maybe a question for Janice, can the RTC and the DTC vote now based upon the present districts? That's what I was saying. Why, I, okay, well, I didn't, I didn't hear you say that. So, I said, I said okay. the other night, but um, okay. yeah. yeah and then, cool. you know, because this, I got to tell you, I started working on this with the understanding that this was not going to come up until after the new council got sworn in. So when I saw it on the agenda, I called Vinny and I was like, wait a second, you know, I was going to propose something for January. So maybe the registrars are rushing on this and there's more time. So normally, um, Mr. Avery said that this information comes to the offices in June and July, and it and it didn't. Whether it's early for the next year, as you're saying, Councilor Fishbein, that it it's going to be the next state rep cycle that this that you begin representing these this new district. Um, so that was part of the the kind of brushed or the panic uh, to, to keep it moving. But the um, so what like kind of what I was saying earlier at the, at the start of this meeting uh, to piggyback on what you're saying, it, this would be similar to the town committees if they needed to, and, and maybe it's not ideal, but if they needed to, they would go forward with the current layout, and then sure it changes midterm, but so does the representation of of people. So that if we can get so first off, Bob Avery's on the call. If we wanna, if we wanna oh, ask right. him directly. So secondly, if we could get, if we could get someone to say exactly that, some like Janice or someone from Hartford, I'd be totally fine with it. My only concern is the disenfranchising of voters. I don't want that to occur. I yeah, don't I want don't someone showing that. up, casting a vote, and not having it count. After that. If, if someone says, no, this is legal, we could do it this way and move people around later, I'm, I'm all set. I'm good to go. Yeah. I, I don't think anybody, I mean, based on all this effort, um, nobody can say that there's an intention to disenfranchise, at least not from the government side. Um, we're just trying to do the best we can. I, I do see that, that Rob Avery's on. It's, it's up to him on whether he wants to, I guess, participate. He may have logged in and can't hear us or see us, whatever, at this point. but. Um, so if we I, want to put to go ahead, I, I, I just, I just wanted to mention, you know, you, you and I had an exchange about, uh, Stephen's school and yeah. based upon, based upon the map, it does appear to be an illegal voting place. So illegal or in a legal, no illegal. Ill illegal because of the side of the street that it's on. So that whole street is not in. The district that is correct based upon the map uh that is in the that side of the street is not in the district the other side of kondraki the other side definitely is but yeah so my question my point was um and if anybody's looking at a map uh if you look down by stevens school the district line runs down the street um and and i you know i'll i can try and look up somebody's location that was in there that area um i was theorizing that it's it's possible that the entire street the line goes down the street but that both sides addresses are within no. that district and you're so you're saying it's just the way that the building looked it was over the line um so you're saying that it's the street addresses are not so where i work 
in Meriden. It's on the Cheshire line of the Franciscan sisters own this property. The street is a Meriden street and about three feet, 10 feet, whatever the, the, the right of way is over the line, all of the property is in Cheshire, all of it, all the buildings, everything, but the taxes and the address and everything are Meriden. Um, but the entire property is in Cheshire, but it's all treated as though we're in Meriden legally because both sides of the street's addresses are in Meriden. Yeah, well, so I, that, I was applying that same possibility that that was the case. But that so but we definitely we should figure that out too. Yeah, I mean, we don't we'll figure that out. So, yeah. Some towns um, circle um, streets and both sides are in, but we don't do that in our town. Um, so when a line, we try and have lines go right down the streets so that one side is one voting district and one side is the other. So based upon that, Stevens would be on the westerly side of Kondraki, which based upon the voting map that's in the registrar's office, would indicate that that is in the fourth district along with DAG. Um, so I think Stevens would be the one that would be wrong. But anyway, that's a different yeah, issue that's, that's got to be dealt that's, with. That's, yeah, that's not a second thing we, we worry about. That's that's a third thing. But yeah, I, yeah, no, I agree with you. It's, it's, it's definitely part of disenfranchising voters. So, you know, I don't want people having to go outside of their district to vote. It's a lot to cross the street, so yeah. <laughs> well, the ninth is a little ridiculous, so. Anyway. Um, oh, so, so we wrote that are on the same side of the street as Stevens and their district two. Is Stevens district two? I don't even know. Is that district three or two? Yes. So it is the same. They're on the same street as Stevens. Their address is in district two so the entire street's address all the addresses on that street are in district two on the uh, west east. and easterly side that, that's what uh jacqueline is saying in the chat well, i'm gonna uh, but wait a second right, right. but the, the, there are no wait hold on there's no register voters on the westerly side of kondraki there's a firehouse and there's a school and then Long Hill Road starts, right? So I, it's basically the same street, though. Okay. Right. I, I mean, in theory, it's. It, I would think it would function the same, but I, it's not. I'm not saying that we we have decided and we're done with this. I'm just. I'm trying to say that it, Stevens might not be as big of a problem as we worry about. Um, the, the, the concept being, because I see some questions in the chat, the concept being, not the concept, is that polling places are supposed to be, um, if, if you look at the technical wording, uh, are supposed to be within the district that they um, are re representing or polling from. Tom. Yeah. So, again, kind of going back to what was said already. Um, I'm totally fine if we could check with Janice and confirm with the state that the committees can vote the way that it is and that these changes take place later. Because in my mind's eye, if someone shows up, whatever district it is and whatever party it is, I really don't care. Yeah. I'm trying to speak as neutrally as possible about it. I want that person to show up and know that they're going to commit their vote to the designated people they want to vote for. And then if it changes afterwards and it's all legal, I don't care. That is my only concern. If if the redistricting happens later and things move around, that's fine. And then part of the larger effort, things that, that Craig's brought up and or these other items, these other items are are correct to ad address. If if in fact these voting places are in the wrong locations, and remember, we used to have 14 voting locations when we had 14 districts, and we've yeah. consolidated down a couple of places probably shouldn't be a voting place. We could start to do the right things by later on addressing situations like polling places where there's plenty of time to communicate people, your polling place changed because 
of, of, a, of a building situation and we're gonna move it from A to B from now on instead of going to A where you used to, you're gonna go to B. And this way it's clear of caucus elections, state house seats, state senate seats, town council, board of ed, so on. If you stick it in the middle of a, a voting season, right around it, then there's confusion and we want to avoid that. We want more people getting involved and getting out to vote, not less and not because of confusion. I'm not suggesting it's intentional, but it, the farther outside of an election that we can do it, the better off we are. Yeah, and I, I think the the confusion now is the sensitivity of the time. Um, so it feels discombobulated or people can make accusations up. And both, well, that's why a ruling's important. If someone could rule, it's okay for them yeah, to come so, and vote right now with what they've got and redistricting formally comes later, then it's perfect. Yeah. Nobody voted inappropriately and that's, and it's fine. Right. So we want to, we want to ask that because um, I, both uh, Mr. Avery and Mrs. Parisi, they've, they've been working on this. It's not like they were like not doing anything. Um, it's just, there's only so much time and trying to figure out, and it's not the easiest thing. Um, as we know, because we've kicked around how many different ideas or maps even between all these meetings and stuff. Um, so I want to comment ask, by Bob in the in the chat if you want to look at it. Oh, okay. Um, says the Rovac says uh, what's that? The Register of Voters, Connect um, for Connecticut, says to go ahead and vote if a person is elected in the town committee is now in another district. He will be a member in the district in which he or she lives in. So that sounds perfect to me. Uh, if if we can just confirm with Janice, then there's yeah. a, this is a non-issue, and I'm good to let it go because that says the person shows up, votes appropriately, the people that are elected are elected appropriately, and then they're shuffling later, and we're good to go. Yeah. Yeah. The shuffling would affect the next time right. the town committee is voted on. Um, a concern though about timeline, and I know we haven't even started 2022 yet, but whatever gets done here should be done well in advance of the next election because oh, yeah. you all know the confusion that people had last time 10 years ago you know i had already talked to somebody i think vinny you know that we're going to have to publicize send postcards or something to let these people know you know you used to vote here but now you're going to go there so yeah. well in advance and, and, I'll, and I'll I'll add on too because um in the chat there Ed Stork has made a couple of good points as well. So we also need to get defined ahead of time what occurs in a situation where there is an overpopulation of members and then where there's vacancies. Now vacancies usually can be addressed by special elections, but we have to confirm if that'll be allowed. If districts are are changed and it creates a vacancy is it going to be allowed for a special election? So we need to confirm that. Then we well, also should find out what happens if a district has 15 members now and after the reshuffle, they're only allowed 13. Are they allowed to keep their 15 until the next cycle or must they jettison to? And then in that case, how is that done? Is that done by a special election or a vote of committee members or voluntary resignations? We need that defined so that everybody gets that information. Um, well, good status aspect, quo. I guess is that once the committee is locked in, it's locked in and they remain members for the two year term. All right, perfect. Okay. That, then, that's, that's, then that's good too, because that says, if you started with 15 and ended up with 13, you get to keep your 15 and 13 is a problem two years from now. Fantastic. Correct. And then at that point, somebody may not get their seat, um, but that, that won't be, that would be until after the term is over. Right, and that's fine too. That's that's fine too. Well, we'll confirm that because that's more important than just the three of us and everybody in the chat hypothesizing. Um, so we want to confirm that town committees can be elected based on the current standards and that the terms will, that's it. They will hold those seats for the entire terms. Um, and we want to confirm the when the exact, when the districts exactly take place um, as Councillor Fishbein has said, it, it believes it's for the next election, um, which was confusing to me because I thought it was it was happening like now, like now, uh, Craig, that you represent 
or in January, will represent part of Middlebury, but you're saying you won't until next year that you will continue to represent. Should I choose to run again when Correct. I'm sworn in next time, I would be representing Wallingford and Middlefield. Middlefield, that sorry. Would, yeah, no problem. That would not go into effect until next time. And, and that makes sense because Middlefield has not elected me, you know? Right. So you can't thrust a representative upon an area there that is not So, voted. yeah, and I was thinking that they were saying, yeah, you elected somebody else, but we changed the lines, and now he's your representative. So for the next – so this doesn't affect the state seat until next – a year from now. Yeah, it would affect um, campaign finance uh, fundraising for the election because right. qualifying contributions would be from the prospective district, yes. And I know, uh, I, again, I, I know um, Mr. Avery's in, in the chat a little bit, um, but from our calls, they, they're, they're working on this. It's not going to take all, that long. It, it'll be done way before the elections. It's just tricky these two weeks are holidays and they've only had it for a week or two um and they're doing a lot of running around to, to piece it all together but all 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 that will be worked out before any of the state processes start for those offices the campaign financing and all that other stuff um but tom assuming that you're able to contact janice yep. monday and she's able to get us an answer um assuming that it goes the way that we think it's going to go. There's no urgency, no expediency here. Right. Um, but we should communicate on Monday if it goes somewhere because we got to get on this if it's. Yeah. So else. what do um, we I will reach out to Janice um, and then I will communicate to the committee. Do we want to pick a tentative date to po uh, a meeting to post? on Monday to post for either Tuesday, Wednesday, or whatever that week earlier yep. during the day. Uh, Jason's he's, he's off. I think my work schedule, I can, I can step aside and, and do something from, from work if we zoom. So Craig, you're, I know, but you have a court schedule, which is different. Um, so if you want to take the lead on what times you think would work for you, and then we can go to Janice and find out what would work with her. And then, Mr. Avery, and Mrs. Parisi. I, I, yeah. I don't want to add stuff to people's schedules like you guys, but I, I want to be sensitive for the public that might want to join. You yeah. know, I don't want to necessarily say we couldn't do something at two or three in the afternoon if somebody's schedules, uh, you know, align with everything else. But I, I, I would feel better in case there's members of the public that have got concerns or comments they want to make that we try to schedule it for 5.30 or 6. If it's going to be a, uh, a go-to meeting like this, even if it cuts tight to somebody's end of day, they could probably still jump on. I know the meetings are recorded, but again, in the interest of if someone wants to make a comment or be present, we've got the flexibility since it's going to be remote to maybe try to make it 5.30 or 6. Just a thought. Yeah. It, so I can, I can do Monday at 6. I thought, Jason, that you couldn't do Monday. Yeah, I, I can't, but Wednesday I could. Tuesday I could. Wednesday I could. Monday's my only conflict right now. Wednesday is not good for me. Uh, Wednesday evening is not good for me. Uh, actually, yeah. it's Thursday. Um, and Tuesday no, I've got I've got a hearing Tuesday night. Yeah. So The only thing, the only night that could work for me would be Monday night. Um, everything else, I, I've got stuff scheduled. Um, and I don't, and I'm not trying to disenfranchise participation either. Um, this is what I was thinking. Uh, it wasn't just after your thought. Is this this could be a way for we'll we'll all get together. We'll be able to talk and get some questions answered. But we um, either way, we would either set up a, another committee meeting that could, could would be at a, a more appropriate time or easier time for people to to log in if there was um, the feelings for public comment. But regardless, um, whatever our committee decides goes to the full council for discussion and a vote and. And, and changes at that point. All the three of us can do is say, we recommend that this get, you know, voted on. And then they can go to, on to a, a regular council meeting and then those other councilors can change it. Um, it this is just kind of a work group. Um, Jason, can you do Monday afternoon, three o'clock? Yeah, that I could do. We won't have time to post Monday afternoon, three o'clock. Yeah, that, that was the other thing I was gonna say too. 
It would have to be Tuesday or Wednesday afternoon in order to have time to post at the earliest. All right, Tuesday afternoon, three o'clock. That works for me. Tuesday afternoon, three o'clock. Hey, Tom, a couple of comments came in about maybe just kind of recapping, like, you know, our action items or bullet items. Could we do that for everybody, please? Yeah, if you want to do that first, I'm going to go to the public because um, yeah. we got to do that anyway. So why don't we um, go to the public and see if anybody has any comments, and then we'll do a, a concise rundown as we, as we wrap up. Um, if people want to start writing, I know everybody's wrote comments, but if you actually want to speak, uh, if you can write in the chat now and um, let us know, we'll give a minute for, for that. I don't know if we have any phone calls. So Tom, call. just, to, just to be clear, if Janice says that the course of conduct that we had previously outlined is okay, then we're just going to end up canceling the three the Tuesday meeting. Yeah. Right? We might not even meet, yeah. And yeah, okay. uh, although, should, do we need to meet to to make a recommendation to the council? I what I would expect is that we are not at DEFCON one at that point, and we just yeah, and yeah. you know okay. we I'm, schedule I'm something sure. starting in January. You know? Okay. All right, so we're going to start um, with Miss Pres oh, Proschino. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Hi, um, Tom and uh, Craig and Jason, thank you very much. It's Fran LaFrance Procino. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. 14 Jackson Avenue, Wallingford. I've been here since 1984. My biggest concern is, as was stated earlier, the redistricting, if it's done um, as Mr. Fishbein has proposed, that's a huge section of the population. And as you have also said 10 years ago, it became very confusing for people. If you use a smaller section, each district would be able to personally contact, you know, um, be it um, Republican or Democrat or unaffiliated groups, we could personally contact people to make sure they are understanding. A postcard or a letter it would be good as a follow-up, but I think a direct connection, we've had so much confusing on voting locations. Um, very evident when I've done phone banking uh, in the pa this past year and previous years. So that's my, my plea, that we could make smaller changes instead of a you know large swath. It, it, it would be much less confusing for the population. Thank you. And, and I do know that, that um, from my conversation for the registrars, that is also their intent. Um, some districts might not change at all. It's just it's they have to modify districts one, nine, and this eighth one or whatever it is. Uh, but they are looking to minimize because it was so confusing 10 or 20 years ago. So and that, that is something that we're going to be doing in, in the that'll be the later phase after we get through this initial. Okay, Tom, uh, the um, the agenda item that we had uh, sought. Um, at the behest of the registrars to have uniformity. So, um, you know, if they're looking for uniformity in the districts, then, you know, that's one thing. But if they aren't, then don't make it part of the agenda item. Well, yeah, it'd be better if these were as square as possible, right? Well, I, uniformity, yeah. unif well, persons, actually. It, it should be by population. Population, yeah. yes, that's what I meant by size. That's how districts are measured. Well, in my mind, they are measured that way, yeah. I, I do believe uh, Mr. Fishbein is correct. It's by population. Yep. Are, are you all set? Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Stork. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Laff and Mr. Zandri and Mr. Fish, but I appreciate the opportunity to speak at Stork 75 Staffordshire Commons Drive. Um, I'm sort of mirroring, mirroring some of the comments I put in there because I think what, what the problem we're going to have um, is if people are, at least for the local town committees, <laughs> voted into a position, uh, regardless of what Robax is saying, because I'm not entirely sure that jives with state party rules anyway, we're going to have a bunch of automatic vacancies that then will need to be filled by special election. Um, and if Roback, what they're saying is those people who are moved, then automatically get a seat. No, you're 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 guaranteed to going to have you're going to have problems 
um, where we're we're over capacity in those uh, in those districts. Um, so I'm not sure how how this gets fixed, and I think a broad sweeping change is going to create more chaos than it's worth. And and I think maybe some of the small changes could be done, um, especially with what was done in the 90th. Yeah, I think some of those people, um, you know, may have to be shifted a, a, a bit. But I, I think the, the real issue here is it's going to really create a problem, I think, for the local town committees. Um, if there's not something set in stone um, fairly quickly, but I don't see this being a quick process. Now, and if we can confirm that the one, it's not that you get shifted to the new district necessarily within the town committee. It, I, I think the town committee then would form and you're a member and you, you complete your two year term. And then at that time, the, the new districts take effect. Um, but technically, like once, you're elected, once you're elected to the office, you hold the office until the end of the term so uh technically that not so for for the democratic party under the democratic party rules technically you it's an automatic vacancy and and you have to give up that seat and there's a special election to fill it especially at the state party level um so you don't you know officers technically will stay to the end of their term um in some cases that's not true but for regular voting members uh that's going to create an automatic vacancy that then needs to be filled. Um, so that's you don't get to sit in the two this that spot for your two years. So that that's sort of the problem, at least from the yeah. Democratic Town Committee. That's going to be a problem. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Mr. Martin, how are you? Um I'm fine, I guess. Uh, my name is Ben Martin, uh, 329 Ward Street in Wallingford. Um, it just, it occurs to me that we are asking people who were affected by elections to make decisions on how elections are being run here. So it seems to me a conflict of interest to have town councilors deciding how these districts are being done. And it's even a bigger conflict of interest if you have a town councilor who is also a state representative deciding how these voting districts are done. So I think even if the law states that the legislative body will <clears throat> decide how these districts are done, it would be advisable and um, a, a point to... Uh, a point in the favor of fairness to point, appoint a independent body to do this districting. Because obviously your appointments and positions are determined by these districts and this should be done by people who are not affected by the results of this. Okay. I don't see how our I mean, we're at large on the yeah, council. Yeah, I was going to say we're we're elected at large. It doesn't it state, all doesn't matter where where these people sit for council and board of ed and mayor because it's all at large. It's more sensitive for the committees which are district bound. Yeah, that's um, that's what okay. that may be different. But and then even state rep. I mean, the state has determined what area of the town votes for what state rep. So. The, well, whatever. It becomes um, a, an operational uh, issue of, um, it, yeah, it, right. As Jason said, it affects the town committees and their their representation within themselves. But um, on the town level, it's it's polling places and. and yes, things. I understand that. But as we know, elections can be decided by the weather or someone's car breaking down or going to the wrong polling place. So nefarious people, and I'm not accusing you three of being nefarious people, sure. but nefarious people could take this process and say, I am going to make this district bigger because I know that more people that will vote for me can get to the polling place in this district. So whether it's at large 
or whether the state decides what the districts are, this can be manipulated by people who want to keep their positions to make these districts in favor of them keeping their positions. I understand what you're saying. I think um, it, in that example, maybe the smaller districts would make more sense because you're guaranteeing that people get to the polling place versus if it's large, they're not going to drive across town. But the, 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 the law is that it's, it is us. We, we have been given this responsibility to approve. So it's, it's unavoidable. Um, with a commission, uh, with the registrars that are mostly likely going to be mo doing most or all this work anyway, um, sure, maybe with the input of counselors, or, um, we, we ultimately have, we have to approve it. Um, and we can't. But that doesn't mean like, you, have to, you have to approve it, yes. But you could point, appoint an, end, an independent commission to do this and then say we are going to abide by the recommendations because not doing so would, would cast a shadow of corruption upon the process. Yeah, but it's come up before in the last couple terms um, with various issues that counselors and elected officials cannot be compelled uh, to vote by any sort of standards um, in any situation like that. Um, Tom, I just, I note that District 1, in fact, I shared the numbers, presently has a total of 1,018 registered voters, whereas District 9 has 4,636. We, we should be looking at this, as I have been for 10 years now, for uniformity so that everybody has the opportunity. And what I've heard this morning is don't make all these changes. So, and the other thing is the voting places. So, um, you know, th that we know that one voting place is violative of the statute because it's not within the district. So I think the intent of this group is to get some even uniformity and not to make these districts so that people can't vote as right. i just heard was the accusation but that's certainly I, not i'm not i'm not making any accusation to anyone i am simply saying that the accusation can be made when you have an elected official deciding how their elections are going to be run well then i suppose that no town committee members should be involved in this process either it really affects them more I mean, I, I don't disagree with that statement. I'm just saying if if you had an independent commission deciding this based on, um, as you say, population factors and ease of voting, getting people an, e an easy way to vote and count the votes, then that would be better than people who are affected by the elections. Well, I mean, the, the registrars themselves are going to, are, are doing that, right? I mean, they're not. They are elected on a, they are rubber stamped by the electorate, um, but they only need one vote and they're done because the parties more or less pick them. So, I mean, a lot of those details are going to be recommended and, and hammered out by them. Um, so I don't know if we need a whole commission when we have the two of them in their offices to do it. I, I get what you're saying. I get it. Um, but I think there is, there is a level of protection in that the registrars are there to, to do that the same and it's like well they could be biased too well anybody can be biased who who chooses the commission so does yeah the no the commission I, and then I, we choose all people that do whatever we want like i don't know well what what was said earlier in the meeting is that the council is approving this so they don't have to abide by what the registrar says so i mean ultimately we approve it right and we don't have to but i i, I don't think that's the the intent and the same thing with the commission. I, I and and there again, I'm not talking about the current in current intent. I'm just talking about protecting this process from bias that might be come in later. And I, I think that's the importance of. I mean, we keep having the meetings, right? So that um, citizens like you and you, and you come to other meetings too can can point that out and call us out, and it's it's its own checks and balance. I just would like to avoid creating another whole commission. But I, but I appreciate the, I, and I agree with the sentiment. I, it is something that we need to be mindful of.
you have any other additional comments, Mr. Martin? Or no, I'm done. Thanks. Thanks. Anybody else have any comments they want to vocalize before we do a recap here? I see uh, people are chatting. I'm not going to read it all. So if you want it um, stated for the record, I would I would read it. Otherwise, I kind of just see it as a sidebar conversation or people raising hands to speak. Are they just like make sure of polling places even if they're in the right district? Mr. Blake, they're... if you give your name and address for the record, uh, it's just a legal thing. Sorry. Um, 11 Welcome Street, Wallingford. And Chris Blake is your name? Chris Blake. So it's saying to make sure the polling places are at least in the same district and also distance wise, because sometimes polling places are so way out there in the district. Yeah, I I totally agree with you. And uh, and I I've said this plenty of times. Uh, this this shouldn't be new. I I think Rock Hill School is a horrible polling place, just based on the operations, the size of the parking lot. The location on the hills, where the parking lots are, this it's every in every which way, it's it's a horrible parking lot, a uh, horrible polling place. And Tom, even this year, you know, the Board of Ed last year didn't have their meeting of nurses on election day, but all of a sudden this year they did again. They took up half the parking lot. I mean, yeah. the other thing is Moses Y. There's one handicap spot out oh, front. Horrible. Yes. Also. And horrible. and. I, I don't know that it happened this year, but I know in past years, that one handicap spot was taken up by a poll worker all day long, which, uh, you know, we talk about disenfranchising voters. Uh, yeah. Somebody's got to be looking at this stuff. Um, Tom Dacey, you want to speak? And then we'll go to Mr. Avery. Tom, just uh, turn on your mic and then name and address for the record. Thank you, Mr. Blake, by the way. Tom Daisy, 17 McKenna Court, Wallingford. I would just like to echo what Chris just said about the polling places being in the district. Uh, when I first moved here to Wallingford, I live at McKenna Court. I used to vote right down the street. But then when we were redistrict, I have to go all the way to Cook Hill. So that forces me to vote by absentee every election. Yeah. Yeah. And the accessibility, aside from the distance, right? The accessibility is an issue. I know, and it's always technical, but just because it, it's possible doesn't mean it's it's easy, especially if weather becomes an issue. And if you haven't already voted by absentee at that point, it's a pain. I'd like to see if it could be changed so that my polling place could actually be in my district. Yeah. Closer to my home. <clears throat> Great. Thank you, Mr. Dacey. Mr. Avery, Thank would you, you like to speak? Your mic is on. We don't hear anything. Yeah, still no audio. He just muted himself. There he goes. Yeah, you are you are not muted, but we cannot hear anything you're saying if you're trying to speak. I imagine you are. You're probably frustrated like I was before this meeting, and then everybody was texting me. As if I didn't know I was having technological issues. Mr. Conroy has written in the chat. I will read it because he says microphone's not working. He says he believes the registrar suggestion is a good one. Scrolling back, which is, I think, Mr. Avery was trying to say, 
so it was on the record, but may I'll just read it because he's clearly having issues. And I sympathize with that, particularly today. 99% um, of the districts are already set by the state. The only change that must be changed is the lower section of District 8, which was changed by the state. And now the council must say what part is attached to either uh, District 2, 3, or 5. Now, if the council wants the first district to be gone or is gone because the state changed it, um, if the council wants, it can divide nine into, uh, oh, now the screen shifted, into the two halves. Um, which I think works too. Uh, district, that side in the 90th is, is huge. And it was ugly last term too, but. It's, um, while, while we're waiting for Bob Avery, if he can clear up his mic, if I could speak real quick, I, I kind of agree with that the assessment. When you look at the, the information that Craig gave us, you can see that there are districts that are they're as large as, you know, he brought up the ninth at 4,600, but the fifth has 4,700. And then we have districts with 1,900 and 1,000. Yeah. If you're going to do some sort of a wholesale rejuggle, get them all at about 3,200 or so as logically and closely as possible as you can. You don't want to divide a street, but if a street ends and it puts 55 more people in one district than another, that's fine. But uniformity probably helps based on the idea of, you know, when you get presidential elections as an example, where 90% of the people turn out, that causes a problem in these larger, larger districts. And that's why I'm saying, you know, in the future, assuming that everything's not at breakneck speed, you know, we decide geographically where we think the line should be, then submit that to the registrars and then have them come back to us with, OK, these are the numbers based upon those lines. And then we can, you know, look at that uniformity aspect and just do this the right way the, the first time. Yeah, I do know that that 103rd district area, though, is um, going to have to be its own district. Yeah. Uh, and it, it will be smaller than than everybody else, and there's there's really nothing we can do about it. We just name it a new you know new district one or whatever. It's off to the side and, and move on with the rest of the the town. Um, Christy Dorr uh, has a good comment that I I never even thought about it like that. Do we break these districts up based on who's registered or ultimately by population? Uh, I am. I think it will. It's by registered. We we don't know the population of each area based on the list that we're dividing it out on. Okay, but that's a good point though too, because I mean Otherwise, suddenly, it, well, but I mean it, it's it's good to know what the requirement is, but it's also sensitive to think about well if they're putting up some some new housing and there's going to be a hundred units going in there, there might be four hundred more people in there and two hundred right. of them might be eligible to vote. Yeah, I think, it's, and that's why it's it's based on the register. Because then you have over the Masonic and Natural Village area, it's a small area, but with a dense voting population. Yeah, uh, and just and the, the recorded record, so that when the minutes are being drawn up, this is uh, Christy Dewar, and it's 12 Penny Lane. Uh, she was saying her mic didn't work either, but we just needed an address for that too. Thank you, Ms. Dewar. And when, when those developments get built, because cause they, right now they try and have each, state representative district um, around 23,000 that's how the shifts happen so that large development would get caught up in the next redistricting and then we would adjust accordingly and the the, the state assembly districts though am i am i wrong in saying this are based on census data yes yes but our but our voting districts are based on registered data our our voting districts should be based upon first what the state does so the example being the sixth right it right. wouldn't make sense i guess we could cut that right down the middle right but it creates confusion because then a voter going into the polling places is going to have the choice of two different ballots so we don't want that confusion right so based upon what the state did then we have to have the six by its own the rest, how we carve it up. And that's why I'm saying, you know, carve it up, have them come back to us with the numbers. And then we say, like, you know, Jason was saying about 3,200 in each of the districts, you know, is this about 3,200, give or take 400, you know, either way for uniformity? 
But so so representation is based on census data, which is why it occurs every 10 years, which is why we are where we are now. Um, the local districts that we decide on in Wallingford are would be based. That's an operational. That's a function. Right. So that would be based on the demand uh, within those areas registration. But it, we can keep everything uniform, like with the hope of being 3200. But a, a polling place like DAG can handle physically, operationally handle a larger flow. Uh, and it also is a denser population that lives around that polling place. So it Great. may that may be a situation where it makes complete sense that DAG is one and a half or two times the size of a, of a smaller or another area, uh, very similar to Cook Hill. Um, dense residential population around it, Great parking lots, um, good gym. You don't have to go all through the school or anything. So, however, ten years ago when these districts were set, Cook Hill was nowhere near as large as it is today. Um, it's had the most drastic increase um, of all of our districts. So that was not the contemplation of those individuals at that time. All right, does anyone else want to speak? I don't think Mr. Avery was able to get his mic working, um, but I appreciate the the comments he shared, um, and we'll, I will reach out. So we're going to do the recap. If nobody else wants to talk, speak. Um, if I miss anything, uh, counselors, let me know. But we're looking to um, going to reach out to Attorney Janice Small and confirm that the town committees can be elected based on the current standards. If vacancies, are, which how would a special election or vacancy apply? Um, it sounds like the Democrats <clears throat> at least may need to have special elections. Um, if we don't work it out by then, which again then brings us back to some of the confusion. But at least I think legally, if we understood what X, Y, and Z were in the process, that it, it would be helpful. Um, and we want to lock in and confirm that these districts actually take place, they do, uh, will take place after the next state election. Um, and for campaign purposes, will begin, Craig, what is it, this, this late spring, um, as campaign finance things may begin to occur, or does it start as early as January? It well, some, can some candidates have already announced so um, and are fundraising. So if you've already announced and are, are fundraising, you would be fundraising based upon the new legislative districts. Um, and again, that is, those lines are drawn, those lines are done by the state. Um, what our concern is, which affects the town committees, um, are how we have the town locally divided up for operational purposes. Um, I think that's it. Those are the three things, right? Yes, sir. Any other questions, comments, or concerns? Anybody wants to vocalize? Uh, we're going to look to, I will reach out to Jan Small, try and get some answers. Um, we uh, have picked a tentative meeting for Tuesday at 3 p.m. that we will post uh, on Monday. Uh, before 3 p.m. or if the answers from um, Ms. Small are satisfactory, we will not post or we'll cancel that meeting uh, because we'll buy more time. Uh, just for information for everybody else, uh, J Councilor Zandri, it, it, this committee needs to exist in any form after the election. He would not be able to hold a seat as a, as a counselor. Obviously, this subcommittee would dissolve on January 3rd. Um, with the election, with the swearing in of the new officers, a, a new committee we, would probably be just reestablished. Um, but as we all know, Councilor Sandry would probably be here with his camera and his mic on anyway, uh, just the same. Um, so the brain power will be there, um, but we would likely add a, a third counselor replacement. Yep, if no, we, agreed. Do it by the book. Yep. So, all right, if that's it, I'm going to declare this meeting adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.